Hello and welcome to GP Podcast. You know, Demis Hassabis, the CEO of Google DeepMind, he recently said something that should, well, frankly, it should alarm you. And he said it right out in the open. So today we're going to pull back the curtain and break down what is really happening inside one of the most powerful AI labs on the planet. See, while the world has been completely obsessed with chatbots, DeepMind has been quietly, and I mean quietly, working on stuff you might not even know exists. We're talking world models that can simulate real physics, autonomous agents training each other inside AI-generated worlds, and even collaborations to solve the energy crisis. So that brings us to the big question here, right? Why can't he sleep? To really get that, you've got to look past the headlines, past the hype, and see the game that's actually being played behind the scenes. And it all starts with a strategy that, well, almost everyone missed. Now, if you've been following the public chatter, you probably heard this narrative last year. Scaling has hit a wall. The AI bubble, it's about to burst. OpenAI was running into some issues, and you could feel the investors getting a little nervous. But then, Google dropped its Gemini models. And they didn't just catch up to GBT4. They set brand new benchmarks in reasoning and, crucially, in multimodal capabilities. That's the ability to understand not just text, but images, audio, and video all at once. So how on earth did they do it? Well, it's because, well, everybody else was betting the farm on pure scale, just making things bigger. DeepMind was playing a completely different game. As Demis himself puts it, half their effort is scaling, sure, but the other half? That's pure, fundamental scientific innovation. And this is the part nobody ever talks about. See, DeepMind doesn't just have great engineers. They have the world's best scientific researchers, period. This is exactly why DeepMind seems to pull ahead when the going gets tough. I mean, these are the people who invented Transformers, the architecture that basically is modern AI. They created AlphaGo, AlphaFold, proving AI could crack problems we once thought were impossible for machines. Now, they're building models like Gemini to have a scientific personality, so it won't just mindlessly agree with you, it'll actually challenge you in a friendly way. And that, well, that's just scratching the surface. Okay, I want you to forget about shopbots for just a minute. Seriously. Because what DeepMind is building in their labs has very, very little to do with just answering questions. It's a project called Genie. No, this is not just another video generator. Get this, Genie can create entire interactive worlds from a single prompt. Worlds that have their own gravity, their own physics, their own functional mechanics. But here's where it gets absolutely mind-blowing. DeepMind can then place another AI agent inside that world to learn. And that agent is called Sima. And Sima can explore, interact, and learn inside the world that Genie literally just dreamed up, all in real time. Just let that sink in for a second. One AI creates the world, another AI explores it, and they both learn from each other in a simulation that could, in theory, run forever. Dimis calls this the potential beginning of an infinite training loop. Genie makes up new tasks, Sima figures out how to solve them, and both of them just get more and more complex, more and more capable. This is so critical because language models have a hard limit. They can read about the world in books, but they can't actually grasp things like spatial physics or what it feels like to touch something. It's like reading a million books about swimming. You're not going to learn until you get in the water. This is what these world models are designed to solve. But this isn't just about creating the ultimate video game, although Demis admits that's definitely a future possibility. No, first, DeepMind is pointing this incredible power at what he calls root node problems. These are the huge fundamental roadblocks for humanity. The idea is, if you can just solve one of these, you unlock thousands of other solutions downstream. AlphaFold, which solved protein folding, that was their first big proof of concept. And now they're aiming even higher. They are actively collaborating with a leading nuclear fusion startup, using AI to figure out how to contain super hot plasma and design brand new materials. If that works, well, it's game over for the energy crisis. They're also tackling things like room temperature superconductors, revolutionary batteries, and even using machine learning to make quantum computers better. Solving just one of these could change everything for us. And think about it for a second. With limitless, cheap, clean energy, you suddenly get universal access to clean water through desalination. You can make rocket fuels straight from the ocean. You basically unlock, well, everything. But even with all of this unbelievable progress, there's a really uncomfortable truth. And to his credit, Demis Hassabis is brutally honest about it. Despite everything you've just heard, we are still a long, long way from true artificial general intelligence. 
And that's because these models have a very strange, almost paradoxical limitation. It's a phenomenon that they call jagged intelligence. You see, these AIs can be absolute geniuses in one area and then completely clueless in another. For example, Demis points out that a model can win a gold medal in the International Mathematical Olympiad, but then fail a simple high school logic question if you just word it a little bit differently. And as you can kind of see visualized here, the real problem is a total lack of generalization. So a model can be trained to be an expert in elite math, but that knowledge doesn't automatically help it understand the logic of a totally different domain, like chess. This jagged profile is a huge red flag that something fundamental, something core, is still missing. So here's the bottom line. Today's models, they lack consistent, reliable reasoning. There's no internal voice checking its own work or thinking before it answers. Their inability to know what they don't know, that's what leads to hallucinations. And maybe most importantly, they're static. Once they're trained and out in the world, they stop learning. All of that has to change to get to AGI. And this, this brings us to the future and to the questions that are keeping Dimas Hassabis up in the... Let's talk about what happens after AGI, because this is the conversation that very, very few people are having seriously enough, and the timeline for it is shockingly short. Yeah, five to 10 years. That's the timeline that Dimas and other top experts are working with. That is not some distant sci-fi future. That is right around the corner. That's within the time frame that your kid might be in college or your own career could be rendered obsolete. The institutions we have to manage this kind of change, they just don't exist yet. And then you have the economic question. The co-founder of DeepMind, Shane Legg, he came to the conclusion that our current system, you know, where you trade your labor for resources, it's simply not going to work in the same way. The entire model of employment that we've built our society on could collapse. And not gradually, but very, very quickly. But okay, let's say we even solve for the money and the jobs. An even deeper question remains. So much of our purpose as human beings comes from our work, right? From providing, from building something meaningful. What happens when an AIG can do all of that better, faster, and cheaper than any human could ever hope to? What's left for us? And this all comes back to the core mystery. Hassabis believes that, so far, nothing in the universe has proven that it can't be computed. And if that's true, then everything, including human consciousness, could eventually be simulated. So his ultimate experiment, really, is to build AGI, put it right next to a human mind, and see what, if any, differences are left. Is it creativity? Is it our emotions? Or is there nothing unique at all? And that, right there, that is the question at the heart of all of this. What does it mean to be human in a world where machines can do everything? That's what's at stake. It's not just technology anymore. It's our very definition of ourselves. Demis Hassabiz knows it, and that's why he doesn't sleep well. And now, well, maybe you understand why too. If you like the video, subscribe, leave a like, comment on what you liked most, and share the video.